Yo, what's up guys? So I recently posted a poll in the community and many of you wanted to know how I calibrate my iPhone footages and that's what we're going to look at today. The footages we will be using were all shot on the iPhone using Filmic Pro's Log V2 picture profile as this gives me more flexibility for color grading in post. Now I will be using Final Cut Pro X as this is my main editing software. So first I will quickly show you how I set up my timeline for color grading and then we will move on to the main part which is base correcting and creating the look of your video. And if you stick till the end, I will show you how you can create your own popular orange and teal look. There will be a timestamp below if you want to skip or go back to a particular part of the video. So these are the three footages we will be grading today. So the first step I do in my color grading workflow is set up my workspace for color grading. Now I have created my own workspace already where I have my viewer, video scopes, inspector, timeline and effects. Now this is my personal preference, but you can of course create your own. So once you have your color grading workspace set up, you can save it or if you made any changes, you can update it by selecting window, workspace, update workspace or save workspace as. This method is really useful since I can quickly select my color workspace and get started with color grading. So now that I have my workspace set up, I will start by base correcting the clip. Basically, this is where I correct exposure and color balance the image. In order to do that, I use scopes that are helpful for base correcting the image. So the first scope that is great for evaluating the exposure in an image is the waveform Luma. This is my go-to scope for correcting exposure. The scope is read from left to right, which corresponds with the image. The trace information is read from top to down with the highlights at the top and the shadows at the bottom. You will also notice the numbers on the left, which range from minus 20 to 120 IRE, where 100 is absolute white and zero absolute black. It's important to not go beyond that range because going above 100 will blow out your highlights and going below zero will crush your shadows. So if you haven't already, open up your color wheels where we will start our base correction. With these wheels, you can adjust brightness, saturation, and separately control everything with the master wheel. With these wheels, I can adjust the highlights, midtones, and shadows. The highlights affect the brightest part of the image, the shadows, the darkest part of the image, and the midtones, everything in between. I start by correcting the shadows, then the highlights, and last, the midtones. So I can now bring down the shadows a little bit till it touches the zero and the highlights are already good and the midtones just gonna drag it down a little to create contrast that already looks pretty good as for the exposure of the skin tones what I like to do is create a mask to isolate it this way I can see in the waveform how well the skin tones are exposed usually I want the exposure of the skin to sit between 50 and 70 IRE so I'm gonna add a mask drag it over and then I'm gonna just create a mask around his face like that make sure to just get the skin and as you can see it's between 50 and 70 IRE and that's good and for the last step I will increase the saturation so next we will color correct white balance issues. You want to make your whites look white and your blacks look black. For this, I like to use the RGB parade. So when an image is balanced, the red, green, and blue traits align with each other in the highlights and shadows. If an image is unbalanced, the red, blue, and green channel will appear offset, causing a strong color to be dominant. So the first thing I do is I try to find out which color dominates the image and subtract that color. Now here's a big tip. Most of the color balance issues can be corrected with the highlights control. So the image already looks well balanced, but I feel it's a bit too warm. When I shot this video, it was quite cold outside and cloudy. So I'm gonna drag the highlights into the blues, making it cooler. If you're starting out, correcting white balance issues can be really challenging. So what you can do is to auto-correct your white balance. 
it does a decent job, but in most cases, you will need to make further adjustments. You can also use a white balance picker if you have a white reference in your image to get more accurate results. So next, we're going to look at the vector scope. So the vector scope is like a color wheel and is helpful for analyzing the color in your image. You have your primary and secondary colors shown. The center represents white and the more you move away from the center, the more saturated the color will get in the image. The boxes represent 100% of the color and you want to make sure that you don't go beyond that. Otherwise, the image will look oversaturated and make the subject appear unhealthy. Using the vector scope is a great way to create continuity in your shot, but also great for especially getting nice looking skin tones. The white line serves as a guide for correcting skin tones and most of the ideal skin follow along that line. A great way to adjust your skin tones if they're off is to create a color mask around your subject's skin and additionally use a shape mask to really just affect the skin tones and not anything else. So the skin tones actually look really good on him already, but just to demonstrate it, I will add a color mask like this and then add a shape mask around his face so that it will only affect that area. And then usually if it's too green, I can take the mid tones and move it a little bit away from green, subtracting it. Usually with smartphone footages, you don't have a lot of color grading option. Usually you just tweak a little bit um, to get your desired uh, look. If you have a hard time seeing it, you can also draw a mask around the subject's skin to really see what's going on on the vector scope. Now that I base corrected the clip, I will do the same process for the other clips, adjusting each individually again. You don't want to add the same base correction to the other clips because not every clip is exposed the same way. So for this clip, I will again use the waveform Luma and I will open up the color wheel and I will start with the shadows, dragging it until it touches zero and the highlights touching 100. I will add a contrast to it. And this already looks really good. Color balance the clip using the RGB parade. Let's see what happens if I add auto white balance and it makes it super warm. And if I choose manual white balance with the picker, so as you can see with the picker, you get accurate white balance if you have any white reference in your clip. So this actually looks really good. I'm just gonna increase the saturation, boom. So I now wanna check if the skin of my subject is well exposed. I'm gonna drag a mask onto the clip and draw it around her skin. So it's a little bit under the usual value. So I'm gonna drag it a little bit higher so that it's between 50 and 75 IRE. And I'm also in gonna increase the saturation a bit of her skin. And I'm gonna open up the vector scope just to see where her skin lies. Looks pretty good already. So her skin tones are well exposed and have the, the right color. Now we're gonna move on to the next image. Again, I'm gonna open up the waveform Luma and I'm gonna open up the color wheels and I'm gonna drag the shadows until it touches zero and the highlights until it touches 100 and increase the contrast by lowering the midtones like that. And I'm gonna open up the RGB parade. The white balance on this image looks actually pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it that way. So now that we have made our base correction to all of the clips, we can create a look. Now you could use those clips as a finished product, but since I like to take it further, I want to give the clips a cinematic look. So for the first clip, I will be using my own creative LUT that I have made, which will make the image pop more and give it a nice moody look. So to do that, I will first create an adjustment layer and drag the custom LUT into that layer. 
and then click on the layer and select um, my LUT, which is the cold steel LUT. I'm gonna open that up. And there you have it. It's a bit too strong for my taste, so I will dial it back down a little bit about 85%. And that already looks pretty awesome. Must be a very cold winter. By the way, the adjustment layer is free to download if you don't have it yet. The link will be in the video description below. And what an adjustment layer does is that it applies the creative look to all of the clips that are below that adjustment layer. If you're interested in the LUTs I use, I have them available for purchase on my store, which also helps support this channel. If you don't have a creative LUT or don't feel like spending money, don't worry, I will show you how you easily can uh, create your own orange and teal look. So we're gonna do that with our second clip. So to do so, add a new color wheel to the adjustment layer and push the shadows into the teals and the midtones into the oranges. Again, you want to adjust the intensity by dragging back the mix tool. And what I also wanna to do to make it pop more is add contrast by dragging down the midtones even more. So what I want to do is make her skin tones pop a little bit more. So I'm gonna add another color wheel and select the color mask and just select her skin, that. Then what I can do is increase the saturation and also push it a little bit into the orange area. Not too much, otherwise she will look unhealthy. So this already looks really good. I'm gonna use the vector scope just to check if her skin tones are on that skin tone line. And yes, it is. Everything looks really well. And here is the difference, before, after. You see how the image pops more? And same goes for this shot. As you can see, there is a difference. Now, before exporting the project, when working with smartphone footage, I like to add a little bit of denoiser and sharpness. This overall cleans up the image a little bit. So for that, I will use another adjustment layer to layer it over all clips. So I'm gonna drag the noise reduction into that adjustment layer. And here I can add the amount of noise reduction. We'll keep it low and sharpness low as well. And I will export the project that way. So hopefully you got a basic understanding of the workflow and the thought process behind color correcting and color grading so that you can make your iPhone footage look the best. Keep in mind that it takes practice. In time, you will soon realize that color correcting and color grading can be really fun. So if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram at Bennett Grazer. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe so that I can keep creating awesome tutorials for you guys. If you want to learn more about color grading, here are two similar videos that will help you get the look you want. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you the next time.